Today, the Attorney General of Illinois released a report on his five-year investigation of child sexual abuse cases in the state's six dioceses. While we have not had time to study the report, there are some points I want to make clear. First, we have reported all allegations of child sexual abuse by clergy to civil authorities. No matter when the abuse is alleged to have occurred, whether the accused is alive or dead, a diocesan priest, an extern priest from another diocese, or a religious order priest. There are no hidden or undisclosed cases. The vast majority of cases occurred decades ago, and many of the perpetrators are deceased. No cleric with even one substantiated allegation of sexual abuse of a minor against him is currently serving in the Archdiocese of Chicago. Since 2006, we have maintained and continue to update a public list of those clerics of the Archdiocese determined through an independent investigation and review to have a substantiated allegation of sexual abuse of a minor against them. Further, we have worked with and encouraged religious orders who have full and exclusive access and rights to their files to publish lists of their members with substantiated allegations. Our website lists religious order priests who have ministered for the archdiocese and were found by their orders to have substantiated allegations of child sexual abuse, no matter where and when the abuse occurred. The report contains a list of individuals the Attorney General contends have substantiated or credible allegations against them and should be included on our web list. However, the list fails to explain the basis by which allegations against these additional individuals were substantiated or deemed credible, and by whom. We have asked repeatedly that we be informed of any cases discovered by or disclosed to the Attorney General's office. Yet we saw new, unexplained names in this report. As the report states, the Archdiocese of Chicago has taken the lead in our country and beyond to meet this societal challenge. Further, we have continued to improve on our initial efforts over three decades by dedicating significant resources to creating best practices for protecting children, promoting healing, and preventing abuse in our church. Let me close on a personal note. Since my childhood days, I have admired the dedication and generosity of many priests who pastor parishes and teach in schools. Their example inspired me to accept God's call to follow in their footsteps. The fact that some who wore the Roman collar egregiously violated their vows and the trust of their people by abusing God's little ones is not only repugnant, but painful for me and my brothers in the priesthood. This is why I have made it my personal mission to take a leadership position in our church to bring about an end to this scourge, to heal victim survivors and protect children. Yet I have always been convinced that children in the church and society will only be safe if the entire adult world unites in this common cause. My hope is that the release of this report will be an occasion for the Attorney General to issue a rallying cry to all adults to join in the work of safeguarding children, lest this moment be a lost opportunity. I stand ready to continue to do my part. Please join me in praying for the healing of victims and the protection of God's children everywhere.